my my comments of a coffee this morning relate to the enormous amount of emails that I get from students asking me how they can manage their time at work um, and I think especially when they're doing articles and how to figure out how to still get their studying done when they're working so much overtime, they're not coping, they're working weekends, etc. How do I manage my time, Yvonne? How do I find time to study? How am I supposed to be studying if I'm just spending so much time working and I'm not coping with the working hours, etc.? So this is probably going to be more than one comment. In other words, it's going to be more than one video because it's a very, very big topic and it's a very important one. So I have a couple of intentions with this. One, this is going to help you. These tools are going to help you are going to help you with your studying because we need to free up time and space, mental space for your studying. So that's beneficial. It's your sanity as well, both for now while you're studying um, and even when you're not studying, uh, you're going to fall into the trap of overwork, uh, too many hours, trying to take on more than you should, being unreasonable about it, constantly feeling like you're chasing something, the, the rat race kind of thing. It's a trap that is just waiting there for, for all of us. So this is about your sanity going forward. Um, and I think one of the things we don't realize is it's also about protecting other people because, you know, when we're a first year trainee, for example, we're at the mercy of the organization and the culture of the organization and the way that people treat us and the work that we get and the expectations people have. So we're kind of at the mercy and we are passengers, you know, because we don't have any power in the relationship to make any kind of changes. But the reality is when we move to second year of articles, third year, supervisor, audit manager, further and further and further up the chain, with those comes a slight shift, you know, a gradual shift in the balance of power. But what ends up happening is that if there's not a conscious change, um, we become part of the problem because we now, we're now creating and continuing the toxic environment uh, for the new people coming in. And we're now part of the problem. We're now irritated with them that they're not working overtime because now I've still got so much work to do and this first year is now taking time off to go study and I need their time. I need them to finish the job. I need them. So we end up becoming part of the problem. There's at least three reasons why I think this is an important conversation. And the first tool and the first thing we're going to talk about is building healthy boundaries. So much easier said than done. And I think, you know, when I look at stuff, I don't really see a lot of information about practically how to go about this, especially given, you know, the unique environment, the personality styles that we're dealing with in, you know, in our space, in sort of the accounting profession. So I want to talk about a couple of tools and a couple of things we need to think about to help us build healthy boundaries to protect our time, our space and our mental energy. So that's, that's what I want to be talking about, building boundaries. What is a boundary? What are we talking about here? It's almost like building a bubble around you, a conscious bubble that says, my time, my space, my mental energy, I'm in control of. And before you get right up in my face, as an analogy, before you get right up in my face, I want you stopping there so that I can choose whether to let you in or not. Because if you have no boundaries, you have no protection. Anybody can come up to you and just take what they want from you. I want your time. I want your energy. You need to listen to me. And this sucks our time. It sucks our mental energy, resources. You know, if we have no bound, if we have no boundaries, it means anyone can walk up to us off the street and go, hey, give me money. Um, I need money, please. And give me money. And we're like, oh, okay, fine. Because we don't have a boundary that says, no, actually my money is my money and I'm not giving it to you, right? So it's like building a wall around us that kind of says, I need you to stop there. And before you get past my boundary, I'm going to decide how to deal with you. If I know this is going to be something that sucks up my time, I need to make a conscious decision about how much time you get and how to deal with that situation if I can't give you what you want. If this is, if this is something that requires my mental energy, <clears throat> I need to think about how much mental energy I currently have and then make the decision. If you're looking for my emotions, you know, you need a shoulder to cry on, you've got problems. I need to think about my own emotional state and go, I actually can't give you anything right now because I'm really struggling. And so the first thing is to be aware of the fact that there is someone there or there is something there that needs something from you. 
And the second thing is to go, just stop there. I need to consciously decide how this is going to work. And I'm not talking about being selfish and go, hey, nobody must ask anything of me. I don't want it. It's just, it's trying to build a healthy boundary of saying, if I don't do this, people are going to suck me dry. I use the word in the workplace, I use the word consume because that's how it feels when you're standing in the middle and you're just at the mercy of everyone who's asking stuff of you. Please do this. Please do that. I need this from you. I need that from you. Please work overtime. Please do this. Please do this. Please do this. You feel consumed. Your mental energy, your time, your space, your sanity is just eaten away. And then you know we'll end up being burnt out over time. It's not sustainable. It can't be done for long periods of time. And if you do, there will be consequences. Burnout, dealing badly with other people, continuing to create a toxic environment is one of the symptoms or one of the reasons that building boundaries is important because you become part of the problem, okay? So I want you to, when I talk about these things, I want you to think about building boundaries as this bubble around you where people have to stop, um, there, you know, stop slightly further away from you and you get to decide, how do I deal with this? How do I, okay, I'm prepared to take this knock now because I don't really have a choice, but I would figure out this is not permanent. This cannot be permanent. How do I deal with this? How do I make this happen? How do I change this? How do I have the conversation? Okay, so that's what a boundary is. We're, we're going to talk about this as a bubble and I use the word consume a lot because I've been in that situation, obviously. I've been in situations where I was consumed, I was burnt out. It was incredibly unhealthy for me. Um, really bad consequences health-wise, lifestyle-wise. And once I left, there was one particular job I'm thinking of. Once I left there, it took me three months to to breathe. Thankfully, um, you know, I had a position where I moved into the next space and, you know, I had like a two or three month break before I moved into the next role. I did nothing but sleep until 12 o'clock every day. Um, that's it. I just needed sleep. My body needed sleep because I hadn't been sleeping. I hadn't been eating. I was literally surviving on Coca-Cola. <laughs> it's terrible, okay? But I would drink like two liters of Coca-Cola a day. I was not eating. There was no food in my house. I was just working day, night, day, night because I was lecturing at night as well. That's it. That's all I was doing. It took me three months and I remember like three months later, I, I had this, this uncomfortable feeling in my stomach and I don't know, I was like, oh, I've got like, I've got stomach, yeah, I've got stomach ache. I'm feeling really bad. And it actually took me a while to realize I was hungry <laughs> because I'd stopped eating for, you know, for, for, I just wasn't, it wasn't a regular thing for me, you know, horribly unhealthy. And so there are going to be consequences. It may not be now, but it will happen. Consequences for you, consequences for your family, consequences for your career. So every time someone hits that bubble, we need to be looking at that and going, how do I protect myself? How do I protect my family? How do I protect my career? Because with the best of intentions, no one outside your bubble has your best interests at heart. You're the only one who does. So anyone outside that bubble is asking you for stuff because it benefits them. They are not sitting there going, is this good for Yvonne? I need this from her. But is this good for her? Actually, no, it's not. She needs to go and study. Like, I know she's studying. So I'm not going to ask her. No, that's not how it works. People are going to go, I need this from Yvonne. Let me go and ask her. And it is Yvonne's responsibility to say, no, actually, I can't do that. But Yvonne won't say that because none of us do. Because we're all, we want to be liked, we have imposter syndrome, we, we're trained in society that we have to go the extra mile, we, we believe that, you know, in order to uh, invest in our future, we've got to work really, really, really hard, and then people are going to notice how much we're working, and they're going to promote us, and so there's a value, there's a future value to doing everything everybody wants from us, we're too scared to speak up, we, we don't know how to have hard conversations, so someone's just going to come to me and go, oh, hey, Vaughn, I need you to work this weekend, and I'm going, oh, fine. And they're going, great, I got what I needed. There was no resistance to them, so there's no, there's no impact on them. And then I fail my exams and I come back and I go, well, I failed my exams because I was working too much. And they go, well, you shouldn't have worked so much. And then what? So this is why, some of the reasons why this is really important and this is what this should look like. Easier said than done. So let's talk about some tools to help us do this.